Hey, this is Dot Too Fast here, and in this video, I will be showing you how to install a remote start in your vehicle. So I'm gonna have to break up the video probably into uh, three parts. The reason being is because it does get very complicated if you're not experienced with any type of install in a vehicle, like car stereo, or if you've never done any car alarms. Uh, this can be very challenging for you. As far as which alarm systems to buy, there are many, many brands out there, and the prices do range from, you know, one hundred to three, four, five hundred dollars, depending on what kind of features you're looking for. The one I've chosen here is the AudioVox Prestige APS 997E. Now, to do the remote start, you do need a bypass module to bypass the car's immobilizer. In your car key there is a transponder chip built in and it's programmed so that it will communicate with the immobilizer in your vehicle. So when you start the vehicle, the transponder chip will send a signal to the immobilizer and once the immobilizer verify that this is the right key, then your car can start. So on the right side here you see the box and that is the iData link, A-L-C-A. I want to point out that I will not be using this module, even though this module will work for this alarm. I'm actually going to be using a Flash Logic FL CAN that will plug into this Prestige with the proper cable. But these are the two components you'll need to do a remote start system. So first let me show you the Prestige APS-997E alarm system and what is inside this box. Here is the user guide and installation guide. Depending on which manufacturer, some of them don't give you the installation guide. You will have to find it on the internet. Download it to find out how to install one of these systems. Here is the brain, the control module for the alarm, and these are the remotes. So here with the LCD, this is a two-way remote control, and over here, the smaller one is a one-way remote. The difference is that the two-way will report back the status of your vehicle so it actually talks to the brain whereas this one, the one-way remote, is just one way. You press a button and send the signal out and that's it. There's no reporting or status uh, that's shown on this remote control. For the AudioVox Prestige, this is going to be the antenna, the valet switch, there's a button right here, and the LED status. So they incorporated three functions into this little module here. And of course you're going to have all sorts of wiring harness so the heavier gauge one as you can see is going to be for your power ignition starter um, and you can see that these are all fused the smaller gauge is going to be for your channel output so you can do control also door lock trigger trunk trigger uh, parking light output if it's a low current pulse output here is the relay for your starter cut this wire is to connect from the brain to the antenna right here. Comes with a battery for the two-way remote. Hood pin switch. In this box is the shock sensor. This is the siren. This is definitely a very compact size compared to some of the older ones um, used a long time ago. As you can see, it's very, very small, which makes installation very easy. But the uh, wire, as you can see, is not that long, so you will need to extend this wire from the engine bay to the inside of the vehicle. I want to stress that if you're going to be doing this install by yourself, you must do the research way before you even buy any of these parts. The reason is because there are so many different brands and compatibility between bypass modules and the alarm systems. So you want to make sure you understand fully where you're getting yourself into. You don't want to buy all these parts and then be stuck with it only to find out, hey, you need to flash this bypass module and you don't have the ability to flash it. So to start things off, the diagram here, this is for the alarm system. Make sure you review every one of these wires. You should know which wire needs to be connected, where it needs to be connected, and which wire does not need to be connected. The wiring diagram that's in the middle here is for the bypass module. You need to make sure you understand that majority of these will need to be flashed before you use it. 
and if you don't have the flasher for it then you're gonna be stuck with a part that you can't use and every vehicle is different so you really need to be careful and know what needs to be connected because you don't want to mess this up otherwise you're gonna damage something in your vehicle this sheet on the right is the wiring sheet for your vehicle it's specific to your vehicle and the model make and year now this information here will allow you to quickly identify where to find the starter wire 12 volt constant wire ignition wire uh, door lock wire there's a lot of information on this and you still need to test all these wires before you connect them up because sometimes this information provided by the alarm company may be incorrect so that you got to be careful when you use something like this is that it can help you is a little cheat sheet but you still got to be very careful and test all the wires before you connect it up let me show you what I've done to do my install so earlier I showed you the diagram and this is actually the diagram uh, that I printed out and I marked up everything that I need to connect up and also I put notes here to remind me uh, which of these wires uh, go where. So this is for the flash logic FL can and again I highlighted all the wires that I need to connect and as you can see a lot of these wires I will not be using because I'll be using the data mode the data mode from the bypass module to the alarm system I also printed out the entire installation guide for the alarm system and the installation guide it's, it's quite detailed even at the back it has information on how to program the options available these are all the programming options the next section this one is the user guide it tells you how to program the remote some of the basic functions again here's the wiring diagram more wiring information for the bypass module for the rest of this video I will show you how to prep the alarm wiring and then I will do a second video on actually wiring this up in my vehicle it will be a 2008 Honda Odyssey then I will do a third video talking about the bypass module uh, the things I've learned about what protocol and what brand of bypass modules are on the market so if you're interested in doing something like this yourself and you really want to learn everything about it then the third video will help you so let me go ahead and start prepping the alarm system and here are all the parts of the alarm system uh, this one here is for the shock sensor so I'll be installing this later on in the vehicle this is the lock and unlock wiring harness uh, I don't need to use this because from the bypass module I'll be using the data mode and the data mode will provide the lock and unlock uh, connection to the alarm uh, system so there's a starter cut it's optional if you want to install the starter cut this is for the uh, antenna and all you have to do is run this from the alarm control module to the headliner where the antenna is going to be these three remaining wiring harnesses will be used this one is going to be the power ignition accessory starter uh, over here this is going to be your ground your parking light output and this one here with the smaller gauge wire these are all going to be the uh, channel output wiring I will not be using all the wires here again refer to the wiring diagram so you know which wires will be used and which one will not be so that's part of the preparation of these wires because you don't want a big rat's nest of wire underneath your dash starting with this wiring harness with the heavy gauge wire this is going to be for your power and referring to the wiring sheet for your vehicle for my 2008 Honda Odyssey you'll see that there is a 12 volt constant starter there's ignition no second ignition no third ignition NA NA uh, there's accessory there's also a second accessory so these are the wires that you need to connect up now keep in mind your vehicle might be a little different it might have a second ignition and you need to connect that up so for my vehicle these are the wires I'll need for all the ones listed here and then these two are the wires I don't need with these two wires that I don't need I do not cut them off and I don't recommend you cutting it off because either in the future you might want to use this system in a different vehicle and you end up needing that wire or also you might find out as you're installing that oops 
I actually do need that wire and I was mistaken when looking at the diagram. So what I would do is basically bundle this up so that it will be out of the way. So here you see I've put a couple of tie wraps. Now some people like to use electric tape. That's fine if you want to do that. Uh, also some people like to prep it by getting a drill put on the end of the wire and then spinning it so you get these wires all coiled together. So that's another method of doing it. Uh, it's up to you as long as you don't have a big cluster of wires under the dash which could be a fire hazard, it could be a problem if you're going to fix anything. This wiring harness is for the ground, the parking light input, so it could be negative or positive. This black white wire is the siren positive output, but you'll need also a common ground for the siren to work. So I'm going to run the ground from this common wire here also. The white wire here is a parking light output, so depending on what you input on this red white wire, it will output onto this wire for the parking light. And also adding my own ground that will run with a siren, like so. I'm going to solder all these together. So here I have my drill. You put the siren wires, the two here, at the end of the chuck. And then while pulling on it straight, go ahead and spin this. Here's what this one looks like after prepping it. We're left with the parking light negative output, the ground, and the siren output right here. Here is the 26 pin wiring harness. And as you can see, these are the smaller gauge wires and I've pulled out all the wires I'll need. Uh, some of these are your channel uh, output. I'll be using it to control the sliding door. And these remaining wires at the bottom here, a lot of these are going to be provided by the bypass module, the data connection, so I don't need to hook these up. I'll go ahead and clean this up. And same as the other harness I showed you earlier, I don't like to cut all these off in case if you need it later on. But what I'll do is bundle these up like so. Make it nice and tidy. And then put a couple of tie wraps on it. At this time, the wiring harnesses for the alarm module is all prepped. As for the wire prep for the bypass module, it's pretty straightforward. Look at the wiring diagram you need for your vehicle. And all the black wires need to be connected on the right side here. I've basically coiled up all the unused wires, leaving only the wires I'll need. And these are the wires coming out on the right. As for the wiring on the left side, if you're using data mode, anything that is dotted, you don't need to connect. And this black wire here is the data mode wire that is represented by this thick black wire here. It goes from the bypass module to the remote start alarm system. 